I've just been sat here for the past five minutes. I forgot that I actually pressed record. But hello, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be testing a few things that I've had so many ads for and see if they're actually any good. The first thing that I'm gonna try because I want to test this before I put makeup on and when I have my makeup on, these bloody milk jelly blushes were filling my entire feed on Instagram, my For You page on TikTok. There was like a two week period where everyone was doing an ad for this. But in my opinion, I think milk kind of messed up in the UK because UK influencers were doing ads for this. But this launched like a month later in the UK. So they were doing all these ads and it made me want to buy it and test it, but I couldn't buy it. They should have just launched it at the same time or just not done ads with the UK influencers until it was available in the UK. That was so strange to me. But anyway, they finally launched on Space NK. So I did a little order and I got the shade spritz of the Milk Cooling Water Jelly Tint, which is a lip and cheek stain made with cooling seawater and aloe for a long lasting wash of color. And I don't know why I thought this would be bigger. I've seen so many videos of it and I just thought that it would be bigger, but it's arrived and it's really teeny tiny, which is kind of cute. I do love the packaging. Ooh, we have some leakage. There's like some blush juice in the lid. Can you see that? Okay, so I want to try this on my bare skin because I've seen mixed reviews of this and uh, I've seen some really good reviews of this and I've seen some reviews where it just doesn't blend. I want to take a bite out of this so bad. Look at it. Oh my God, wait, is that ripping it off the thing? I should, probably shouldn't do that. Ooh, smells kind of like rose water. Let's see actually if I can just pat that directly onto my cheek. How am I supposed to apply this? Like brush, sponge, fingers, draw some on. Oh my God, it is really cold. Okay, quick, <laughs> blend it out. Hmm. I mean, that seems to be working okay so far. It's definitely more sheer than I thought it was gonna be though. Maybe that's just the shade that I've got. Cause I did actually wanna get the red kind of shade, but it was sold out already. You can definitely see that. And I mean, obviously right now I have no makeup on. I literally just have some moisturizer on. I put on the Embryolisse cream. Seems to be blending nicely on my bare skin. Thank God. I wouldn't really wear blush just by itself without any makeup on, but I did just wanna check because some of the videos that I'd seen, people were asking, does it apply okay to bare skin? And so I just wanted to give that a little test because it is more of a stain. Oh, wait, let's try a bit on my lips. Ooh, oh my God, it's so cold. Is that doing anything? Oh my God, it's just like, oh my God, I just wanna do this forever. It feels so nice. Okay, stop. Mm. The rosy kind of smell, like weirdly, you can't really taste it on your lips. That's definitely done something. I mean, it doesn't feel like a balm or anything, which I was a little bit worried that it was gonna feel quite balmy and oily, but it really doesn't. It's kind of just like the tint. So far, so good. But the real test is gonna be, will this work over the top of makeup? Because realistically, that is when I would use it. I'm just using the Kosas foundation and I've got the shade Light Neutral Warm 130. Oh, you can actually kind of still see it peeking through a little bit. I'm just using a little bit of the Nude Sticks Bondi Bay bronzer stick. I I know for a fact though that the shade that I've got is the lightest out of all of them, but other ones did look a little bit more intensely pigmented. So potentially the other videos that I've seen where people are unable to blend it, maybe they've used the darker shades and it's got more pigment and it kind of sticks in your face more. That would make sense to me, but, oh wait, shit, I forgot to do concealer first. Let me know though, did anybody try these milk blushes? Were you as excited for them when they first came out as I was? So let's go for it and just, oh, that comes up brighter on top of my foundation. That blended pretty well. You know what? I've seen some horrible reviews of these, but I think it must just be the darker colors because maybe this one doesn't have enough staining power to like stain your face before you blend it. Looks nice to me. I'm just going to see what happens if I put it directly onto my brush. Wait, does that even work? Is it even coming off? I'm scared I'm going to break it. Let me just wind it back down. It doesn't come off as much on my brush. Let's just do another layer. You know what? I'm gonna do an actual experiment. Let me see if I draw a line of it here. Let me just wait for like 10 seconds and then I wanna see if it blends in. Okay, now let's see if we can blend this in. That's left more of a stripe. Yeah, that's definitely left more of a stripe. Do not leave it sitting there. Cause now, oh shit. I'm I shouldn't really have done that. That was definitely more difficult to blend and now it's kind of left like a little bit of foundation, lifting, separation kind of, like it's almost removed the product underneath. On this side, it does seem to be sitting pretty well and I think it's definitely helped that I've used a more glowy foundation. I can imagine if you used like a matte, thick, full coverage foundation, it would not mix well with this. I think you definitely need something with a bit of movement in it, with a bit of glowiness to it so that it actually blends in a bit easier. On this side, I don't know how well you can tell, like it's kind of lifted the foundation a little bit underneath. Yeah, I think you can kind of see it's a little bit patchy there. You know what? I don't hate it. I think it's turned out quite nicely. I like the shade on my lips. I might actually add. Whoa! Can you see like how bright the inner of my lip is? 
<laughs> I don't know why I just demonstrated it like that. I don't know guys, let me know what you think. I do wonder how long this is gonna stain for because it's fully stained my finger that I touched it with. I'm just gonna finish off the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Whoa, jump scare. <laughs> I've powdered. I've not actually yet added any powder blush, but I just quickly wanted to show you. You can still very much see the color through. However, I did notice after setting that this side does look a little bit patchy. Can you see that? There's like a few areas, like especially here, where there's like more pigment here and then like less pigment in the middle. Do you see what I mean? Like it just looks a bit patchy. This side looks a lot better though. I still think for those blushes, they're not my favorite. I like them more than I thought I would because it didn't just immediately stain my skin like I've seen in some reviews. I guess it kind of just depends on your makeup preferences. For me, I don't think this sits as nicely on top of foundation as another cream blush would that's maybe a little bit thicker. I like the color though. I'm just gonna do my lips. This is Huda Beauty Lip Liner in the shade Pinky Brown. I don't need any more of this on, but I wanna put some on. This is the e.l.f. Lip Oil in the shade Honey Talks. Interesting lip combo, definitely different for me, but I actually really quite like it. My face is looking very flat. One sec, let me just add some glow. I just filmed a little short video of the new Rare Beauty blushes, but I would definitely put those in like a full video soon, like a full review, because currently I'm not too sure what I think. To be continued. The next thing, I was getting some very almost threatening ads from Stephen Bartlett being like, just try it. Just try it. And I'm talking about Huel. Has anyone else had so many ads for Huel on TikTok? TikTok specifically. Then I was like, you know what? I have recently started going to the gym a couple of months ago. Me and James are both going together and we are trying to be more healthy. And I know that Huel does a lot of kind of like protein stuff for like gym goers and all. Oh my God, I can smell this through the bag. I'm not bothered with like protein powders and stuff, but the thing I was most interested in for Huel when I was watching these ads was their nutritionally complete food. This is the Huel Hot and Savory. You just take a scoop, put some hot water in it, leave it for five minutes, and then it came up looking like pasta. I guess it's the same kind of concept as like pot noodles and like cup of soups and stuff. I wanted to try it, so I ordered two. And the reason I ordered two is because I have a bone to pick with Huel. You can't just order one bag. I just wanted one bag. It was like 18 pounds something a bag and you only get seven servings. So I was like, well, what if, <laughs> what if it tastes like shit and I don't want to eat all of it? I just wanted one bag. I didn't want two bags, but I asked James if there was a flavor that he wanted to try. So I went for the pasta bolognese completely Complete, nutritionally complete food in a bag. And James went for the Thai green curry, which I was like, James, that's kind of a rogue choice. Like, I feel like you could get that really wrong, whereas pasta bolognese is maybe a bit more simple, but maybe I was wrong. So let me just show you what we got in the box. Okay, so the Huel package has arrived and I did actually open this up because we weren't sure what it was and then I remembered it was a t-shirt. But you know what? It's actually a really nice quality gym t-shirt. Like it's one of those like kind of stretchy gym material ones. So I'm gonna wear that to the gym. Not bad. So we have the pasta bolognese and the Thai green curry. It comes with this little um, kind of pot thing that I guess you can make it up in. We also got a free little nutrition bar, which is quite cool. And then two scoops, I guess one for each of these so we're gonna cook these now so i believe the kind of cup thing and the scoops and the t-shirt were free it did come up with the t-shirt being like a free option and so here is my huel t-shirt and it feels quite nice <laughs> i just fear that if i wear this to the gym i'm gonna look like stephen bartlett's number one fan I, by the way i don't actually think it's his company i think he's just an investor or he's on like the board of directors or something whatever that means but he does a lot of ads for it on, like on his podcast and on social media and stuff i have actually just got back from the gym if you can tell already by my red face <laughs> let's have some lunch so this is what the thai green curry one looks like it actually smells really nice, which I wasn't expecting, but you add boiling water to this. So that's James's lunch. And then this is mine. So this is what it looks like before I put in the water. Then it says to put in 100 ml of water, of boiling water per scoop. I've just done one scoop because I'm going to try it. And I'm also going to try a bit of James's. I don't get how this works. It's like the tiniest little pieces of pasta, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so that's my water. Give it a stir. I've just covered it with a plate and I'm gonna leave it for five minutes. This is what James's one looks like, the Thai green curry, which looks interesting, but I'm gonna try it. It smells like an actual Thai green curry. My one didn't really smell as much like bolognese, but... Mmm. Oh no, I've just dripped it on myself. You know what? It's a really nice flavor, but I wish there was something a bit more chewy in it because the little crunchy bits, not crunchy bits, but like the little chewy bits, whatever they are, like beans or something, quite small. But it's actually a really nice flavor. Obviously, there's no chicken in it because it is vegan, but it tastes really nice, actually. I'm quite surprised. I thought it was going to be gross. This is what mine looks like. Taste test. That's not as nice. It tastes quite like artificial. Also, I don't know if the pasta is supposed to like go soft, but it's still crunchy. I think that's what's throwing me off, the crunchiness of the pasta. No, I don't like that. Not a fan. It has a weird 
aftertaste like it doesn't actually taste like tomato pasta it tastes like weird sort of artificial tomato the thai green curry one was so much nicer like i would actually eat that this i mean it's edible but why is it crunchy okay wait there are a few bits in here that are like there are a few bits in here that aren't crunchy so i'm confused i did the exact instructions hmm those bits aren't crunchy, but half of them are. So with my pasta bolognese, I would say this doesn't taste like bolognese to me. It kind of just tasted like a tomato -y pasta. There was no kind of beef flavoring in there. These are all like vegan, I'm pretty sure. Is it? Yeah, it says su suitable for vegan. So I wasn't expecting it to taste of beef exactly, but I don't get any beefy kind of flavor from this. More of like a tomato, but it was quite an artificial tomato. I am still going to use this up because I don't want it to go to waste. And it is still like, it was fine. I wouldn't say it's delicious. It was fine. It did the job for like a quick and easy lunch. Something that is interesting though is I did actually leave like a few pieces in the bottom that had gone like really crunchy and I was just not vibing with the crunchy pasta. It's a bit of a weird thing. However, I then left it on the side for like an hour, came back and those hard bits had gone soft and squidgy. So I think maybe I needed to add like a little bit more water into it um, or just leave it for a little bit longer than the five minutes for it to like all soak up the water because the crunchy pasta I think was really throwing me off. Also to make this a bit nicer, next time I'll probably just sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top. And I mean, it's fine, but I would wouldn't repurchase this. The craziest thing about these meals is that it says the number of vitamins that it has in here. Vitamin A, vitamin D2 and D3, vitamin E, vitamin K1 and K2, vitamin C, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B12, biotin, pathanoic acid, potassium, chloride, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, iron, zinc, copper, mag manganese, selenium, oh she's a selenator, chromium, molybdenum and iodine. I don't know what half of those things are but apparently that's all in here. I don't think though it has your full amount that you need for the day because it says like 22%, 80%, 28%, 47%. They're all slightly different. But 25 grams of protein for lunch, like that's pretty decent, I think. And it also says on the back, experiment with amounts of water to find your perfect texture. So I think I just need to experiment. After buying this one, I wish I'd bought the carbonara one because that's the one that I've seen in the adverts. But I just thought, oh, pasta bolognese, that's maybe a bit less risky, but maybe I was wrong. I wouldn't buy it again. <laughs> that being said though, the Thai green curry one, I've got to give it to them. I actually enjoyed this. I wouldn't go quite as far to say it's delicious, but I would say it's nice and I used to be quite a fussy eater I'm better now but I'm still quite picky with certain things but I like Thai green curry and to me this tastes like a Thai green curry but just without the chicken and maybe a little bit less flavoursome however again I've got to say my order came to I think it was 42 pounds in total and would I buy another two bags of these again probably not fair enough it's got a lot more protein than just like a regular pasta probably would have but I'd probably just have pasta with tomato sauce and maybe just have it with some beef <laughs> <laughs> for my protein. I know that that wouldn't have all my vitamins and minerals, but I'd probably have another way to either take them in like tablet form or gummy form or just eat some vegetables. And then they did put this little protein bar in the order. Let me just insert that clip. Hi everyone, so I'm just setting up my filming room by setting up, I mean like just having a little tidy of my filming room while my camera battery charges. Um, as you can see, I need to clean this mess on my desk behind me. I'm starting to feel a little bit hungry and in need of a snack. So for my snack, I'm gonna try the Huel bar. It says it's got high protein, 26 vitamins and minerals and low sugar. It doesn't say the levels of them though. I was gonna go have a Cadbury mini egg little bar, but I'm gonna have this instead. Hmm. To me, that tastes like chocolate and raspberry, but with cherry. It's a really interesting texture. Like it's kind of squidgy and then it has a more liquidy layer on the top. You know what? That is actually nice. It's a tiny little bit grainy, like the middle work. If I was choosing myself, I probably would have picked a different flavor, but I thought because they put one in there anyway, I may as well give it a try. It does taste nice. I'm just not the biggest fan of like a uh, raspberry flavoring. I like the texture though. I mean, I didn't finish it. Clearly I didn't like it that much. I just don't like the raspberry. But that's just me. That's not their fault. Kind of interested in their greens. However, I'm still working my way through the mango free soul greens, which actually I've nearly finished those. Maybe when I run out, I'll buy the Hue ones. But again, don't like how you have to buy like two things in order to make an order. That's a bit of a scam. The next thing I've had so many ads for, either like people doing an ad with the brand or just like them popping up as ads. I have not once searched for these products, but they were appearing before my eyes consistently. So... I bought myself some loop earplugs. Okay, I've got to say the reason I actually ended up buying these, and I do want to say this is a bit of an important PSA. I am a concert goer. I love going to concerts and I go to quite a few a year and I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes when I'm just sat in silence, my ears will start ringing and making weird noises. And I Googled it and it says that it's like early signs of tinnitus. I am slightly concerned about the health of my hearing and your hearing is so important. And I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. To be quite honest, I've not really had any education about
about like protecting your hearing and how if you go to concerts you should be wearing like earplugs or what are they called earbuds or earplugs i knew that obviously like children when they go to concerts they're wearing like the big ear defenders but i didn't i've never seen anyone that i know going to concerts with like earplugs in and i didn't really know that that was a thing until recent years of my life and i do worry that maybe later in life i will have hearing issues because i've been to so many loud concerts and especially like after some concerts i remember when i was younger like a teenager and even now like after taylor swift concert jesus christ that was the loudest thing i've ever experienced not only from the music but the people screaming in a stadium full of i don't know like sixty thousand people after that concert my ears were ringing and i've had concerts where like my ears haven't felt right the day after and that's probably done some damage to my ears which is a bit concerning so i thought you know what for the next concert i go to i'm gonna get some loop earplugs because i've seen people talking about them and i thought i would try them for the video so i went for the loop experience they do have a slightly more expensive one which i think are the experience plus which come with more ear tips and i believe the slightly more expensive ones um have got different types of earbuds to limit different levels of sound so these are 29.95 they do also make other ones which are they have some that have got switches which are more expensive so you can like do multi-mode ones which they look pretty cool actually they also do loop quiet which are for sleeping which are basically just like kind of they look like standard earbuds but i guess just like more reusable rather than just foam ones that get like all your earwax stuck to them and then you have to throw them away they also have loop engage which i think are just for like um social situations where you just want to reduce the sound a little bit but you don't want it to like fully block out the sound and when i have tried regular earplugs in the past i do struggle with these because they're usually quite big like this and i know that you're supposed to kind of roll them between your hands and like warm them up and like mold them into the right shape but then when i actually put these in my ears eventually they just fall out also like look how far out my ear they stick i mean actually who cares it doesn't really matter as long as you're protecting your ears but i just feel like eventually sorry am i now shouting i just feel like eventually with these they end up falling out of my ears and also obviously after a while they get a bit gross and you kind of have to throw them away because they're not super easy to clean so this is the box you get different size earbuds in here i think i went for the small ones in my ears my ear holes are quite small like i have small ear canals because i've always struggled with like these kind of headphones okay this is my first slight issue they're a bit fiddly if you have long nails but this is what they look like i went for the gold ones which kind of match all my piercings and this is the little case that they come in when i first got these i was trying to put them in by like holding the little hole between my fingernails and then trying to like shove them into my ears and they were really fiddly but then i realized that i wasn't actually putting them in right so you want to kind of like hold it and i will say it is still a little bit fiddly with long nails but now that i've been doing it you kind of get used to it so you don't want them to be sticking out of your ears like that you want to make sure that you sort of like put them in and then you want to like twist it so like take your finger and sort of like twist it round so that you can't see them from the front oh my god am i shouting or am i talking quietly because when i was wearing these at country to country um i was trying to talk to james and i was saying stuff to him and he was like i can't hear you and he was like you're talking so quietly i was like no i'm not i sound really loud in my head but i was talking really quietly i think it's because of the concert environment i'm pretty sure just then when i had them in i was yelling at you but that was kind of strange but let me just insert some little clips of me at the concert with these <laughs> This is amazing. So on to my pros and cons. The pros are, I could still hear all the music. I mean, I know that these are supposed to kind of like filter out the sound. They have a little hole in them. I don't know if that little hole is anything to do with filtering the sound out or if that's just a random little hole to make them more lightweight. I don't know. But the pros were, I could still hear all of the music, like, completely clearly it wasn't i didn't feel like it was muting the concert or anything i guess because it is so loud um it didn't seem to block out any of the instruments like i could still hear everything i will say it took a bit of getting used to when i first put them in i was like oh i'm not too sure how i feel about this like they feel a little bit weird and it felt a little bit strange but after about half an hour i forgot that these were in my ears and i briefly took them out to see like what it would sound like without them and i was like oh my god, it is so loud. And I was thinking, how was I doing this 
without anything in my ears before now, but they didn't fall out my ears. I was singing and dancing along. Uh, I was kind of worried that maybe they would work themselves out of my ears, but I guess cause you like put them in and sort of like twist them round. Um, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty in there. Yeah, they, they stay in pretty well. And I left that concert and I didn't have the ringing in my ears that I do after every concert. Like normally I come out and I'm like, oh my God, it sounds so weird. And I can hear like this in my ears. I didn't have that after wearing these. And I think I will now be taking these to every concert that I go to, especially Taylor Swift. And I was saying to my dad, like, you're gonna need some earplugs because it's gonna be the loudest concert of your life. And I guess another pro to having these instead of like your regular foam earbuds. I mean, one, they look a lot nicer. When when I had them in my ears, they kind of do match my jewelry. And I think they look kind of cool. With the regular foam earbuds, I mean, you have to chuck them away after a few uses because they go a bit gross and manky. Whereas because these are, they've got the little silicone earbuds. They're very easy to clean. So you can like clean your earwax off of them and you can probably get the little replacement buds. So they potentially last you forever, which is I think a good investment. The cons are that obviously they are a bit more pricey. When I was at the concert, I was so worried that I was gonna drop them because they were like a little bit fiddly to get in while I was actually there. And the case is like quite, it's very like lightweight and not super substantial. So like trying to put them back in the case and get the case to close without like dropping this and then falling out onto the floor. I was stressed. So the cons for me is that they were a little bit fiddly if you do have long nails and also the case, I feel like could be a bit more substantial to hold them better. Cause they do just kind of like float around in there and then you can just like tip them out like this. And because they are so lightweight, if I drop these down one of the seats, I'd probably never find it again. Okay, I've just had a quick look on their website and they they seem to sell a case that does like fit them in it better. Extra carry case is $14.95 for the extra case. I wish that mine just came with it. Redesigned with extra security in mind, the new and improved carry case now features a molded silicone insert to keep your loops safer than ever. Okay, so they did actually listen to feedback. I guess I'm not the only one that had that. What? Okay, on their website, it looks like the experienced ones come with the new updated case. Amazon, why did I get the old case? That's annoying. That is good to know. Oh my God and they do also sell a loop link where you can attach, it's kind of like one of those sunglass strings the, where you can attach your loop earplugs and then have them in your ears and then when you take them out, they're like dangling around your neck so you're less likely to drop them. Doesn't quite look as cool, but I guess serves a purpose. But I've got to say, I will now be taking them with me to probably every concert that I go to if I don't forget them. This next thing is so random, but I just had to download it because I've had so many ads on TikTok of this mobile game and Kylie Jenner is in the advert for it. As in, she is on the TikTok app being like, oh my God, everyone needs to download this app. I can't even remember what it's called now. Travel Town, this game, right? When I first saw it, I was like, it's just one of those like stupid AI things and it's a deep fake of Kylie Jenner. Then the more I watched the ad, I was like, oh my God, I think that's the real Kylie Jenner. And then I was like, what the hell is she doing advertising a mobile game? And then I was like, this game must have money to be paying Kardashian Jenner ad money. See, in a way I kind of felt bad for them. I was like, okay, you've paid Kylie Jenner, I'll, I'll download it so that you can, well, actually they're not getting any of my money, it was free. And if you think I'm paying for some of those in-game extras, you may be correct if I get really addicted to it, which I nearly did earlier today. Okay, so I feel like I'm doing my own little ad for this right now. The game is called Travel Town. I downloaded this earlier today and I thought, oh, I'll just play it for like 10 minutes so I can give a review. I sat playing it on my phone for I think an hour and a half, which I'm actually quite embarrassed to say, but I, I do love a mobile game. Like I was so into Candy Crush and into Best Fiends back when those were like big. <laughs> After like an hour of playing this game, I was messaging James like, hey, can you download this game so I can and get some more energy points because I've run out and I refuse to spend money on it. So this is where they get you, right? I did some little screen recordings. It's essentially like a matching game. It's nothing mind blowing. You match the little pictures with another one and then you it creates more things and then it turns into something else. And then you wanna try and I guess make that and then match that with that. And then it turns into something else and then you get coins and you can upgrade your little town. Honestly, <laughs> it's quite addictive. However, addictive until the first few 
few times you run out of the energy points, obviously you start the game with enough diamonds to be able to buy more energy points. So I did that a few times and then it comes up with, oh, if you've run out of energy, you can get more diamonds for watching this ad. So then you would watch an ad and it would give you more diamonds and you can keep playing. But there was only maybe like three or four ads. And once I got past that point, when I'd run out of energy points, which you need to play the game, the ads for diamonds disappeared. And it comes up with, do you want to buy some more diamonds? You can buy 80 for 199. And I was like, okay, that is how they hook people in. And that is where they're getting their Kylie Jenner money because it was, it was addictive to the point where I nearly spent two pounds to get 80 diamonds so I can continue playing this game. And I was like, Soph, snap out of it. It's literally a mobile game. It's not like you get a skin that you can keep forever. Like on Fortnite, I've now gone back on it. I've got a hundred energy points and I'm sure after I finish filming this video, you know exactly what I'm gonna do. And then you can use your coins to like add stuff on your map and upgrade your town. So I kind of like it. I will still play it, but it just frustrated me that it got to a certain point where you had to spend physical money to keep playing it. Okay guys, the final thing, maybe it's what everyone's been waiting for from the thumbnail of this video. I finally bought the Boomba, the Boomba Ultra Boost inserts. Um, I actually got these off of Club L London, which is like a fashion website in the UK because this is an American brand. And if you don't know what Boomba is, I will put up some, actually, maybe I can't put some ads on the screen. I will probably possibly get demonetized. Let me just show you the box quickly. So they came in this box like this, nice little magnetic box. And then you open it up and it says, shh, this will be our little secret. Shows you how to use it. It has a little thank you card. It says like the types of clothes that it's compatible with. It gives you instructions saying to stick it onto the inside of your clothing and then stick it onto your skin and to like scoop upwards um, and all of that jazz. It says it's compatible with thicker material outfits, tight non-stretchy clothing to help create cleavage, structured bust area with support under the bust. It is not compatible with thin material that cannot fully hide your nipples. It's also not compatible with thin stretchy clothing that the inserts cannot push against and clothing lacking in structure. If you've never got an ad for this, which I'll be quite surprised if you haven't because Jesus Christ they've got budget for their ads. They are these sticky double-sided bra cup insert things that are supposed to give you insane cleavage and I've seen people using these with wedding dresses and that was the main reason why I wanted to try these because I asked on my Instagram the other day a little poll of what undergarments people wore with their wedding dress because being 100% honest with you guys, if you've been here for a while, you know that I'm a member of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee. I don't have a whole lot going on there. On my wedding day, I want to feel like I have a bit of a boost. My wedding dress does have inbuilt cups, however, I want to try and create some kind of minor cleavage if that's even possible because being completely real my boobs like I have a tiny bit of something but they are not friends and so in order for them to have any sort of cleavage I need like one of those sticky bras that you like literally stick on and then stick on and then clasp in the middle which I have used one of those before and it does work however I just think on a hot summer's day it's probably gonna peel off and I had a few people message me horror stories of that happening to them and unfortunately with the way that my dress is I can't wear a dress with visible straps and I can't wear a dress with a visible back because the back is kind of see-through so I'm like so why did you do that to yourself it's so much harder to get like lift and like cleavage with no straps. And it was expensive, it was 45 pounds. However, I did find a 15% off discount code online. So I did get them for a bit cheaper. You can obviously order directly off of Bimba's website, but I believe because it's American, it will probably take a little bit longer to arrive. Whereas I paid for next day delivery and here it is. These are so sticky. Like it just immediately sticks to me. And the inside of it, if you can see, is like very padded. They do also make ones that aren't quite as padded if you don't want as much lift because that's like a, almost a full boob like <laughs> that's a lot of padding I do wonder how long the stick will last but you're supposed to angle this I believe so that the sort of empty part is almost like where your nipple sits and then the v-shaped padding is like like this way and then you stick it to your clothes and then scoop everything in and then it hopefully sticks I went for the sand color and I went for the a cup one it looks quite big to me for an a cup but I guess we'll see this is not like obviously I wouldn't wear, <laughs> wear this as an outfit Fit. but this is just a black corset that I got from Zara. Actually, no, it's from Zara, but I got it in a charity shop. Um, I've not actually worn this out yet because I'm a bit self-conscious too, for this reason, because there's like, as you can see, there's like nothing really going on. And actually, I think this kind of makes me look even flatter than I am because it's sort of like boned, but like doesn't really, it just does nothing for me. Let me just, okay, so I do it like that and I, hang on, I'm gonna have to, to the top first and then it said to scoop, scoop, 
and then stick. Jesus. Okay, that's kind of, <laughs> it's been so weird. But you know what, I don't care. I'm just trying to help you guys out. Um, I'm 27 YouTube, by the way, if you're watching this. This is nothing, this is nothing inappropriate or sexual. I'm just trying to help out my fellow members of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee, or maybe just anyone that wants a strapless, sticky bra. Okay, so let me do the other side quickly. Scoop and out. My finger's stuck to it. <laughs> Scoop and, oh, whoa! No, surely not. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, wait, I just moved my arms and then it got rid of the cleavage. Sorry, I was getting quite excited by that. Like, this is gonna be nothing new for anyone that actually has boobs, but for somebody who doesn't really, it's like, oh, that's given me a bit of something. However, <laughs> that definitely did something, didn't it? I don't think this top is particularly flattering on me anyway. Like, I don't really like it. <laughs> I'm quite impressed so far. Well, that doesn't make my, I think it makes my boobs like a bit of a weird shape because it's mostly just at the side. And then is there like a bulgy bit here? Some of that initial cleavage has definitely died down, hasn't it? I think just from like moving, it does feel pretty secure actually. Let me try it with another top. Okay, so this next top uh, is like a corset style top. This was from Lavish Alice, but I got it on Vinted and I couldn't send it back, but I've never actually worn this out because it doesn't quite fit me right. It kind of rides up a little bit. It does have like boning built in, but as you can see, like I don't feel the boning of this anyway. Stick, stick it to the clothes and then scoop. Oh, that's not worked, has it? Mm hmm. No, that's not really worked. I think maybe this shirt isn't tight enough. Scoop. I mean, it has definitely done something. However, but I feel like it just looks a bit odd here. Like the shape looks weird because you can see where like the bumba cut cuts off here. And then that is like my <laughs> actual boob. But it just looks a bit like not quite right not quite the right shape. If anybody has these, how long do they last before they're not sticky anymore? Yeah, it's not really doing much for me on that one. That's not a kind of a flop. Maybe this isn't tight enough in the first place. Next, the third top is this one, which is like a corset style top. I got this from TK Maxx. I think it was only like a fiver, which is an absolute bargain. But it's this black corset style top. And this again, I feel like doesn't do anything for me like with nothing on because it actually like almost flattens, flattens me out a little bit. Um, This one though, I will say does work really well with a regular push-up bra. Scoop, drop. Oh, although the top is now kind of like wonky. Oh no, I've just done my hand again. Oh, wait, no, readjust. Why is it so sideways? Oh my God, I've repositioned it wrong. <laughs> I've repositioned it wrong. It's quite tricky to get it in the right place. That has done something, but again, I just don't, I'm not sure I've got it in the right place. Like it's a little bit fiddly to do. Okay, that's better. In order for it to work, you kind of need to push them as close together as humanly possible and like really scoop and I mean yeah that's given me some cleavage but does it look kind of weird but I don't know if it looks kind of weird from the side because it's like a bit of an odd shape I don't know and I'm not sure this would be comfortable I don't know I really don't know how to feel about this because I feel like it just then looks a bit bulgy at the sides and there's like too much going on here and not enough going on I don't it just feels off, like it doesn't quite feel right. Okay, this is the final test. This is my Moose Lover bodysuit, which I tested in I think the previous one of these videos. And again, this works great with like a regular push-up bra. I have a feeling it might look really weird underneath this because you might be able to see the exact outline on it of it. Can you see it? Kinda. Oh wow. That has definitely done something, but again, like does it look like a weird shape? Maybe because I'm just not quite used to it. I don't know if you can see it a bit too much like through it and you can see that it's like really far on the side. When you don't have a lot going on, like it's hard to get them even and now I feel like that's just sat almost like under my armpit. I don't know guys, I don't know if I could comfortably go out with this and I think it would just be better to wear a push-up bra. I really wanted to love this. Like, and in the first top I was like, wow. But I feel like on the rest of the tops it's just not quite worked as well. I think maybe the issue is that it's too padded. But like, if you don't have a lot going on there in the first place, it almost like creates an extra boob. So if you put it in the wrong place, it looks really obvious. I'm not sure about these for my boob size. Maybe I needed to get the next size down. Or maybe I should have gone for the ones that have less padding. Cause these ones are like the two sizes up ones. If anyone's tried it, please let me know what you think 
think of it or if you have another alternative i think maybe body tape might be the next one to try but anyway i hope you guys are good i hope this video was helpful if you did find it helpful please give this a thumbs up i will link everything down below and if you like this kind of videos i would love to have you as a subscriber because i post them fairly frequently and of course if there's any other products that you want me to test that you've seen ads for let me know because it's really fun so i hope you're doing good and i will see you in my next video bye